In this video, we're going to focus on how to create an arbitrary line like this, where we have a line here, where we have a background color here, where we have the text here within a box. And this is quite challenging because of the calculation we are going to apply in a canvas. So let's start and explore how to do exactly this. How to create an arbitrary line with text box in Chart.js. So this video is a continuation or an indirect continuation based on one of my other videos based on the request from a viewer. So in this video here, how to create a horizontal arbitrary line, here one of the viewers, Dia booked here, I'm sorry if I pronounce it incorrectly, was asking about can you uh, do a video on how to add text to that specific line, all right? So I had a video, but now I have a video with line plus a square box around it. So that is as an add-on because maybe you want a square box around that. So how to do that? Let's start and work from the very, very beginning. First of all, make sure you go to charges3.com to the link getting started. And in here, we're going to grab the default code. So I'm going to copy this code. And if you would like to understand this specific code, please check out this video here that explains the JavaScript of that code here. Very important. So I'm going to Paste that in here. Once I did that, I'm going to cut out this and I'm going to put here the new title. All right. Save this. And once I save that, refresh. There we are. All right. So what I will do here is I will make this a little bit different. I may, I'll use a bar chart design. I'm going to give it only one color, which will be the red color. So I'm going to remove all the extra colors here. And this will be re uh, renamed into something else. All right, so let's say here we have this. We want all the bar colors here. All right, you can just remove all of that because there's no arrays, just a single color here. Same story here, single color, no array. Comma here, all right, so weekly of sales. Well, this could be, um, let's call it temperature. Temperature, all right. This will be the temperature measure in maybe in C or in Fahrenheit, depends on where you are. So Celsius or Fahrenheit, although this is quite low, so it doesn't make any sense. Let's do it on C. All right. So this is slightly more acceptable. And what we want to do is the following. What we're going to do is we're going to add up here a item. So if I save this right now, we have everything here. All right. Now let's assume this is a refrigerator. And what we want to do is we want to make a line here, of course. But we, when the refrigerator is too hot, we need to cool it down immediately. All right. So to do this, we're going to create basically a few items. But first of all, we need to create the plugin. So the plugin will be set here in the options. So you're putting comma. And here, we're going to give this a name of the plugin will be called. Well, type in your plugins. Let's say this is a heat tracker, heat tracker plugin. All right. So once we have this here, we can now start to work with the constant of heat tracker equals, and this is always consistent, or at least I prefer to do it as consistent as possible. So you have heat tracker here, and then you have the ID, and the ID is equal to heat tracker as well as a string. And so make it as consistent as possible, and later on it will be very easy to use, so you don't get confused at all. So we have heat tracker here. So what we want to do is basically the following. We're going to work with it and we're going to create first our callback function. Callback function here will be before draw, meaning that we will draw this specific command first before it draws the chart. Very important. Uh, or else you will be able to overlap. So it's like a layer. Very important to remember that. Just think about layers in Photoshop or something like that. You will understand exactly what I'm talking about. That if you would draw first a chart and then this, that means that the lines will be on top of those bar charts or on top of everything. But if you draw this first, our heat track, which will be our line from left to right, it will be at the background of this and this will overlap on top of it. All right, so we have your chart, arcs, and finally options. So these are what we call our parameters, these are essential. So we we'll easily read basically all of these values here. So once we have this, what we want to do here is the following. We're going to say here constant, and this constant is what we call object destructuring. 
we're going to say ctx we're going to grab that one because this is connected with everything we're going to uh, the canvas part and then we have here the chart area and the chart area covers basically the specific area here all these options if you want to understand this really deep i would say check out this video here about, about how to create a horizontal arbitrary line i go in here very deep in detail of every aspect of it and it's very useful for you in this video i don't want to go too deep in it because i already covered multiple times all right so what i'm going to do here is basically in this chart area i'm going to specify or grab these objects quickly so basically what we're doing here is this is just chart dot area and then if you want to have the top or the bottom, so we say here top, this is the object. So top, bottom, uh, left, right, width, and height. And all of these are related to the specific chart, which are these four lines here. And the width is from measuring this point to there, and the height is from top to bottom from the chart area, not the canvas. All right, so now we have this here. Let's see what we are uh, doing next. So we have this, and then what I want to do is the following. I want to put in here comma, because we might need the scales as well. Most likely we will. So we need the scales positioning in pixel amount. Remember, this is a canvas, and the canvas works with pixels. So this is why we're doing all of these. We have to break them down, and after we can calculate the, the pixel positioning. So that's why we're doing this. All right. So now we have this here. Once we did this, the very next thing here is uh, this item here. We can say here ctx dot save. All right. So I have this here. I just want to check what's going on here. Do we have any errors here, or is there something missing? Well, probably here. Uh, it should be like that. If I'm not mistaken. Let's save this and see what's going on here. Do we get an error? Yes, we do get an error. So I have an unexpected token here on number 56. Ah, all right. Sorry, you can see here the chart area. Pay attention here. This is my mistake. You can see I use column here, but I forgot a column here. All right. That explains why this was not working as expected. There we are. So everything is still fine. Meaning now in here, the plugin is being activated. It reads this part, but of course, this part didn't draw anything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw basically four items. We're going to draw the line, we're going to draw a background line, we're going to draw the text, and we're going to draw a box. And that all together is nicely. All right, so let's do this right now. Uh, first, let's start with the heat line. So we're going to do in here, uh, let's see. Let me say here, heat line and this heat line is basically a ctx dot stroke and style all right so why stroke stroke means basically a line but if you think about canvas canvas thinks about a painting so painting is blank it's a blank canvas and when you use a paintbrush and you make a line with your paintbrush we call it a brush stroke so in this same team they use stroke all right very important to remember that so you understand the term here but basically it just means a line and then here we can say here the stroke style which is a color we can just give it a color let's give this a blue and then the next one will be the ctx and this ctx will be the stroke rectangular which stands for rec and this We'll have basically the four values, the x0, the y0, the x1, and the y1. This is basically the starting point on a, a horizontal level. This is the starting point on a vertical level. This is the uh, ending point on the vertical, sorry, on a horizontal level. This is because it's left to right. And this one is a ending point of the, the vertical level, sorry. So meaning, this is from left to right, this is from top to bottom, all right? So now we have this here. What we're going to use here is basically, well, let's say this. Imagine if the refrigerator will be higher than 8 degrees, it's basically far too hot for a refrigerator. It should be 7 or below. 8 may, might be acceptable, 
if someone would open the fridge, the temperature increases, etc., etc. So something like that, you can imagine a case. So we'll, it should cool down the moment it is 8 degrees. So we're going to put a line here on 8 degrees. So to do this, we're going to start first at the left side. Where we want to start is here. We don't want to start at the very beginning. Let me show you this. The very beginning would be here. If we put in here this specific uh, x value of 0. Now we want to just move it here to this specific line. Since we don't have to calculate that because when you break down the chart area where it calculates for us, that means it saves time. The left here is the pre built in calculator for us. So we're going to copy that and we say this here. The very next thing what you want is we want to make sure, I'm going to move this, we want to make sure that it starts here and it goes all at the very end here. And you might say the selection would be right or the, the the right value here. In this case, no, that's incorrect. We need to get the width. If you want to understand why, this video shows it why. Very important. So we get here the width. So the next item what we're going to do is we're going to start in here. Where we want to start is well, we want to start at the eight degrees here on the uh, y scale. So what we need to do is we need to get the pixel value of that. So how do we do that? Well, we have the scale here, so we already can work with some of these special commands built in in JavaScript, or sorry, in Chart.js. So we say y, and we say dot get pixel for value, and here we put in the array value. In this case, the array value works, well, it works here. This is 0, we're on to all up to 18. There's in total here 19 arrays, including the 0, right? Or 19 elements. So that's including 0 is 18 plus 0 is 19, all right? So this is why that we have 8 here, we just pinpoint on 8. But if this would be different, maybe this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, up to 100, and you want to hit, let's say, 50, then you would have to look here, what is the element number or the array number of that? Very important to understand. So let's say here, pixel value array or element number 8. So once we have that, well, well, the next one will be here. And this will just be the, uh, well, we don't want to move this at all. We just put on 0. So if we do this, now we have something working. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a CTX restore. This is to reset always our values so that the chart doesn't grab any of these values to draw any other values because as you can see here we are on before draw so it will draw first this before it draws the original chart save this refresh now we have a line here and you can see here we get here a nice line that pinpoints when the refrigerator would be too hot um, all right so the next item and I realize here maybe the temperature I'm not sure I have temperature temperature should be like that. All right, temperature. All right, that's better. That's correct. Written English. All right, next part. What we're going to do here is the following. What we have to do now is we want to put in here this background color here, make it slightly blue. It's like an extra exercise helping us to learn more better how to use the Canvas API or basically the Canvas coding. So you say here, heat background. And the heat background is almost exactly the same what we did here above. CTX dot, but now instead of CTX dot stroke, we're going to put in fill. Difference between fill and stroke, a stroke is like a square, but only a border. Yes, and you might say, well, I just said it was a stroke like a paintbrush. You're correct. But it works with these four digits here, or these four values, and you could make basically a another value if i put this on tool save this you will see here it looks like a border with a transparent square all right so that's that's to make sure that you understand why so we say here first of all style but this one the fill will be fully colored in one specific color so we say here we can do blue as well let's do blue for now later on we're going to give it a transparency or maybe it should be now already rgba and then we say here 0, 0, 200, 0 0.2. This means alpha value of 20% or 20% visible, 80% transparent. Next, ctx dot. 
let me say uh, fill rec and fill rec will be different from what we did here. So if I refresh this, it's back to original. We want to have this top to here. All right. So probably already figure out that most of this we can already grab because what we also need is the left and here. So we can almost get everything except we need to move a few values around. So we're going to get the left first, comma, and then we'll just leave that blank now. We get the width. So we have this one. The next one would be these two here. All right. So we will start here at the very top, meaning we need to get this top value. And then our ending value would be here on the eight or on eight degrees. So we're going to grab this value here. We paste it here. Save, refresh. All right. So we have something here, but what is happening here? You will understand now here, something is not right. To understand this, you must understand the structure here. I will refer you back to the other video. Go, go to this video just to make sure you understand that. So we need to remove this space here. To remove this space, we just need to reduce here this item. How do we reduce it? Basically the top value. The top value starts somewhere, well, starts here. But there's still some space between here and that's being calculated. And this is the reason why we have like an overlapping or more, val more transparency blue than stopping at this line. So we need to remove that. We do that by minus top. Do that, there we are, nicely. Now we have that. All right, so now we have this line here. What we want to do is the next part is eventually the text. So to do the text, all we need to do here is CTX restore, just to make sure that we uh, remove any default code. All right, so what we're going to do, I guess we should not do the text first, but we should do the box first. And the reason why we do the box first is because the box, uh, we will do the text on the very end because it's the last one, which would be the last layer on top of everything else. So that's the reason why we're going to do the, the text at the very end, but we need to do a certain item with text. Um, well, maybe what we could do first, I'll just work on the text and afterwards we're going to put that down. So here, let me show you already, it will be heat box, heat text box, text box. But here we will do the heat text. And the reason I'm doing this now first, because we will be needing a specific value here that we need to put in here. So I want to make sure that this is visual or, or clear right now. So we're going to make here the heat text and there is a ctx.font. And here all we do is basically giving the font value. Very straightforward. 12 pixels, we can say Arial. Once we have this, the next thing what we want to do is to say the color of the font. So I say ctx dot fill style to make a color. And then we say equals white. So we're going to make it white because we will have a text box that will probably be the blue similar to this line here. All right, next one, what we want to do here is we want to put in the text value and we want to control the positioning. So this is an important one. So we're going to say CTX, oh, I don't want this capital, CTX dot fill text. All right, so the CTX dot fill text has two items here. Uh, the text, whatever the text will be. And then we have here the, the basically the X value or X position. So where we position it on the chart or on the canvas on the X, which is the, sorry, the left to right, X is the horizontal level. And then we have the other one is the Y position, which would be on the vertical level, which is up to down or top to bottom. All right, so where do we want to put it? Well, we want to put it here in the center. Somewhere here in the center, we want to put that exactly on this line here. So we're going to play around with some positioning here. So this could be the text and we can give it any kind of text here. Uh, let's say uh, too hot that would be the text too hot and then number one all right then here we're going to give it a value so let's put in here 100 and then here we do 200 so we just see how this responds and once we did that there's another item we need to do here we say ctx text align because we want to put it in the center. So I'm going to work on that later on. So we say here already center. 
And finally, ctx.restore. Always restore at the very end to, to undo any saved values. If I save this now and refresh, do we have any things? All right, this is white, so I'm going to make this black for now. So it's easy to spot. All right, so this is too hot. You can see here we are here somewhere. I'm not even expected it was just here below, but that's fine. You can see this is 100 by 200. Of course, we don't want this. What I want to do is I want to get the center of this. So if I would do here 200, you will see it will start to move more to the right side because of the X position. What I need here now is exactly the center. To calculate the center, which is luckily quite easy once you know how, is the following. I'm going to grab here this specific value. We need the width, and we need the width divided by two. Now if you do this, you will see here, but we're not yet in the center. And the reason why we're not in the center is because there's some space here at the left side. And this space here is calculated by the left variable that we have. So we say here width divided by two first, and afterwards plus left. And the left will grab us, and we'll put it nicely in the center. All right, there we are. So once we have that, the next one is this top or this uh, a, a Y positioning. So we're going to get the right positioning. To get the Y positioning, all we have to do is basically this. We're going to grab this specific value, put it in there, and there we are. So now we have our text. It starts to work nicely. But what I want to do here is, of course, something else. Well, later on, we're going to change these colors. Let's work now with the heat box because I want to make sure you understand this and uh, we probably have to later on make this a specific constant. So I'm going to make this a constant here for now. For afterwards, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Uh, well, what I will do for now, I guess we'll just, I will just convert this into a value first. So what I'm going to do here is this value, I will put it in this option here. And this is the reason why we have always the heat tracker or these variables same. Because what I need to do is I need to measure how big this is. For that, I need to make a constant. I could make it here a constant, but it would not make any sense if I'm going to uh, adjust this further, putting it in here anyway. So I'm going to do that first. So in the options here, comma, we're going to say here plugins again. And this plugins, so we're going to have what we call a shorthand. This is basically what we're doing is a shorthand, convert this and make it more user friendly. So we say here in this plugins, we're going to grab here the heat tracker plugin. And here we make a shorthand. And this shorthand will be, um, we can say here what would be a nice term here, heat text, I guess. We just say heat text. And the heat text equals whatever the value will be in here. I'm going to grab this. Put it in here, and this I will just change into options dot heat text. All right. So this is a shorthand and makes it also user friendly for your users because now they can just put it in the chart plugins uh, object with the name instead of using these uh, what do you call these kind of canvas code. We're just using now JavaScript that is related to the terms. All right. So now we have this, and now I'm showing you why this is so important. If I save this right now and refresh, it doesn't change at all. And you can see here, if I do this, it doesn't change at all. Or it changes, there's no difference in it, and it's now dynamic. All right, so this is the only thing I wanted to have, because now I can work with these here. So what I'm going to do here first is I need to measure, measure the uh, space of the text of heat text. And the reason I need to know this, I need to know, because if we're going to make a square around it, we need to know how big that square needs to be. And this needs to be soft coded, because if you will hard code this, you have trouble. So we, the soft coded can be done by calculating here this specific value, all right? Or by calculating this constant right now, which will calculate how many pixels the font or this, this text contains. So what we're going to do here is the following. We say here a constant is a text space, and this constant text space equals ctx dot measure text. And then we say here options dot heat text. And the reason why I'm doing this is because of that here. 
So then we'll have the space here. So once we have this space, or we have to say here dot width, so basically this is the command, and this is our constant now that we need. So if you see here our console.log, you will see here what will happen. Save that, and now if I refresh, we see here 73. All right, so if that is true, if I would make this short, just I need this, you see now 13 pixels. That is correct because it's smaller now. If I do one more right here, it's about 20 pixels. So approximately one character is maybe seven pixels. All right, so let's go back here. I'll just put this here again. Here we are. So we have the value, but there is a but here. This value should be also having some padding around it. Because if you will make the square exactly the matching, it will be from left to right, it will just fit in there, but there should be some padding around that. So I'm going to work on a padding. So how do we add a padding? Very straightforward, almost similar to this. What we they say here, all, all we do here is uh, text space padding equals text space, and then we can say here, uh, well, plus 10 maybe. So we have some extra space. And once we have this, we can now work with the next item, which is the uh, box holder, basically, or the text box. So we say here, CTX, begin, oh, begin pad. So once we have that, we say ctx dot, and then we're going to put in here a rectangular. Because we're going to draw a rectangle, and this rectangle will consist again of four values. So what are we going to put in here? Well, we need to calculate the center of this here. We already did that here, but we have a few items that we need to do as well. So what we're going to do here is the width. We're going to grab the width first. Width, and then we have to divide this by two. The moment we do that, well, let me put in here the i value as well. This is the y0. Then we have here the x1, comma, y1. All right. So we have this one. We have the width here. We're going to divide this. And once we did that, we still have to do some extra items because we want to calculate just similar to this one here. Width, divide by 2, and then plus left. To plus left. Why? Because then we are in the exact center. So because we will get only this space divided by two, and then we plus this extra white space here. That's number one. And then what we need to do here minus, and then here we have to grab basically the following here. We're going to grab this text space padding divided by two. And the reason why we divide it by two, we need to be here at this beginning here, and then eventually here at the end. So we need to or we need to find this beginning here. So we going to grab this, divide by two. Once we did that, so we have the center, we figure out the center, and then we need to figure out uh, we have to move how many pixels do we move to the left back to cover eventually this. So that's what we're doing here. Alright, so I hope you're able to follow along. This is the most tricky part in Canvas is how to calculate position. Uh, squares and rectangles and etc etc all right so once we have this the next one is of course the positioning so the positioning will be basically this we can just grab that one here and put it in there and then finally here the other two items and that is the this one here so basically this here is the ending point so the ending or the length of it it should be the text with the actual padding. All right. And once we have that, the next item will be well, we can put in here a specific value, but this should be eventually a shorthand here. So, what I will do here for now, we can just say here 30, and later on, I'm going to work with this shorthand. But we're going to change this here. So, if I save this, all right, we're almost done. Now we have to give it a color. So, CTX fill style and then this fill style should have the color here so let's give this a color of blue as well and then finally here let me say ctx fill 
And this would mean to confirm the fill that we have here up in this specific rectangular. And once we did that, then we need to as well undo everything or restore. And the reason why we do that is because now this is going to have the hold the memory of that. And then if you don't restore that, you will see it will grab here the same color and you have an issue. So if I save this now, let's look at the positioning. All right, so the positioning is slightly off, which is all right, because I didn't deduct the positioning in the uh, vertical level. What I mean by that is basically here, we grab this and it just starts at this line here, but we still need to do here some deduction. This deduction could be uh, like this here. If I do this one here, we push that up, there we are. And why 15? Because we selected here 30. If we do here 0, it will be again a line. You will notice it. So if we do 30, it goes 30 down. But what I need to do then, I need to push it 30 up. Of course, this here should be basically, I would re recommend if this eventually will be 20. There we are. It covers it as well. So if this would be 20, I guess this should be multiplied by X amount, 1.2, to grab that. This is why we need later on a calculation because if you would make this bigger or smaller you can change this as well because 15 here is based on uh, this value divided by 2 so we have a whole formula in here all right so now we are very close to the annotation we already have this but I guess well basically we do have it here and what I do want to do is the final item give this a white color make shorthand so it's easy to adjust them here and then we're basically done all right so what we're going to do here is the first shorthand would be uh, here. We could say here heat line color. You say options dot heat line color. You can copy that, or I will just copy this here, and then we say here on the heat line comma heat line color, and this will be blue. So if I save that, and then we can also check here. What I would suggest here is the heat line color. If the heat line color is blue, what I should do as well is the box, the heat of the text box. You can see here this one should be also options, options with S dot heat line color. All right, so if I save this now, refresh, it works. So if I make this red, just to confirm, nice, that works as well. So I save this, put it back. Then the next thing here is the fill of the text. I'll just make this white here. You would, if you want to change that, well, we, we should just do it here as well. Heat text. Let's grab it in here. Just put it in here just to make it heat text color. Let's put it in white so we have everything nicely done. We're going to change this here as well. We're going to say your options stuff. That. So we have another shorthand. All right, text align center. I will not touch that one because I always assume, assume that you always want to put it in the center. All right, uh, next item, what we should adjust is eventually this with the calculator. Uh, let's see if we should have anything else that I'm missing here. All right, this one here, the heat background color. So I will just say options dot, say heat background color. So I'm going to grab all of this. Basically, I will grab everything, including the heat background color. Now as I copy that, and then I will remove all of this, but leave the semicolon here. So we have a shorthand, comma, and then we say this, heat background color, colon, there. If I save this now, do we have it? Yes, we have everything here. All right, so we have here, the last item that I want to do is eventually this one here. I want to control the font size. The font size will influence whatever we have here. And I realized that, should we have the font size and this times 1.5 or because that will be maybe not clever because if you have like 50 1.5 would be very big but maybe yes if this would be 20 we just do plus 10 always so it's always plus 10 and then this would be that value here divide by that or divide by 2 all right so if you are still confused don't worry i'm going to show you so in here We'll put in here another item and then we say heat text font or maybe heat font size that makes more sense here we will put in here number so I'm going to put a number here so once I have this number next thing here is the following 
uh, we're going to adjust this. I'm going to use here backtick. So these are temp template literals. And this will help us so we don't have to concatenate complicated. But this is an easy way of concatenation. So these are backticks. Backticks are just below your escape button on your keyboard. And then we say here, dollar sign. This will make sure that JavaScript knows that this is a variable. And this variable is called options dot. Let's look here. Repeat font size. Put it in there. And then you can see here all of this. I'm going to remove all of that. And I'm going to just cut this out, remove that. And then you see here, you can see the yellow is instantly considered as uh, string values. But this white item is considered as a variable. So this is very nice. So now we have this. Save that. The refresh here we have that all right so we have this the next thing what i want to because this is just a nice variable we can now use this for calculating here our padding so we can just do this plus 10 pixels very simple then here we do minus this is minus 15 so what we need to do here is basically this and I'm afraid that if I would do more and more formulas here, it will be hard. So I will make sure I'll just simplify it. So I'm going to grab this. And then we say here, uh, what will be the right term for this? Uh, font size. Um, what will be here? Positioning or uh, font size. I have no idea right now, connection. I'll just give it font size connection. It's not the right term because I'm just trying to figure out what would be the right term, but I don't know at this particular moment. So I'm just giving it something. I would highly recommend you to look for a proper name for that. So we do here, the font size connection should be divided by two. And then, but we have to Make sure that this is first divided before it will deduct the value here. So this is a really a long formula already and getting confusing for many if you don't pay attention. So save this, refresh. Now we have this. Now if I would change the font size to 20, refresh, you can see this is fine. It doesn't expand the padding. If I do even this, uh, let's say I do this 50, you would see here exactly expected although here a little bit space that's all right for now i will i will neglect that and this is basically how you can do this so if i put this back here there we are so uh maybe you are interested in having rounded border like border radius that is to be honest very complicated as well and i will make a separate video for that because this was that's really a tricky one and this is already quite tricky so uh what i do recommend especially if you have a hard time understanding what I did and with the positioning again check out this specific video that covers how you calculate positioning because this is the hardest part in the canvas main reason is because canvas count at the very top at zero going down is is increases the value and of course for for if you're working with a chart you expect it starts at the bottom so ex exactly or everything is exactly the opposite of what you think it should be so that's why it's so hard so definitely watch this video. I'll make sure pop-up shows here. You can click on the link.